point, man, you know, or maybe even a double, double cutaway. Like an SG. <laughs> that would be so metal. You should just get like a flying V, man. Like a very curvy yeah, flying you V. Yeah, acoustic flying V. Why not? All right. Hey, everyone. So uh, we're joined by John Stickley today. We're doing another little interview. Um, John Stickley just had a new album come out. Uh, I'm going to say it backwards. Has that, has that been happening a lot? Have people been saying it backwards? Uh, saying it backwards <laughs> means you're actually saying the phrase correctly. <laughs> It's scripting the flip. <laughs> and uh, so we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about some other stuff. I know he had uh, a tour in the winter that happened. So we'll find out some details about that. But anyway, hey, man, how are you doing? Doing well. Doing set. I'm settling in to what's going down. I'm settling into what's going down or the lack of what's going down. <laughs> The first thing I want to talk about is the uh, the tour that you're doing with uh, Andy Thorne, the the Sticks and Thorns, yeah? Is that right? Yep, yep. That was uh, Sticks and Thorns Volume 1 uh, tour. First time we've done that, and uh, we've been talking about it for the last 20 years, and uh, finally made it happen this year, and uh, glad we got some, we got a couple good runs in before everything shut down. <laughs> Yeah, did you did you actually lose some dates? I didn't remember exactly how the timeline worked out. We did not lose a stickly thorn date. We got to do our little. Uh, we did a long weekend on the East Coast here in North Carolina, and uh, then we got to do uh, almost um, just a week and a half run in Colorado in February, and uh, it was great. That's great. You you were sort of like just in the nick of time before things were really shutting down. Yeah, like just getting crazy. Yep. I, I drove the van out. We did the tour and then the the trio flew out and met me and we finished that run as a Stickly Trio tour. So we got, we got some great Stickly Trio dates in this year, too, um, which I'm really thankful for now. Yeah. Well, it's it's super cool that you got to tour with Andy because you guys are old time friends, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. The, he's my oldest friend. Um, Probably my oldest friend I'm still really close with and uh, was my first picking buddy back in the day. That's cool, man. He's the only one that stuck around. Everyone else was like, this guy? I'm not talking to him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you know my brother Jeff Stickley. He's down there in your area. That's right. I do know Jeff. <laughs> and he's, Jeff's pretty much holding down the scene down there on the Big Fat Gap. He's playing, playing a lot with a lot of different people, but me and Andy started our first band in high school, probably around 1998. If Jeff ever puts together the Jeff Stickley Trio, you guys have to, you know, fight it out on stage. I would like to be in that band. <laughs> you're going to you're gonna take a brief hiatus from the John Stickley Trio to join the Jeff Stickley yes. Trio. Yes, 100% rhythm. Yeah, if you need, maybe maybe Jeff needs two rhythm guitar players. I'll play rhythm with you. And he can play all the leads. Two, yes, <laughs> two bluegrass rhythm guitarists backing up Jeff Stickley on only lead. There we go. <laughs> we were playing like a local brewery thing. We we're playing like a small time gig here in Raleigh, North Carolina. And uh, he he was like, let's play Old Train. And I was like, yeah, dude. And he's like, do you do you know the kickoff? Like, can you play it? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I kind of know it. And so he played it in the beginning. And when it came around to the end, he was like, you take it, you take it this time. And uh, he totally tricked me. He he started playing it the same time that I started playing it. And we like dual <laughs> Tony Rice did out. <laughs> Quinn, Tony Rice outro of Old Train. That's the kind of shit you get to do with Jeff Stickley. <laughs> yeah, dude. There's some tunes that he does so well, too. He's got a real high voice, your brother. He does. Great tenor singer, great lead singer. And he's, he understands harmony so well. And we love singing together because it's, there is something just about this, the DNA that makes harmonies work. You know, that's time tested and it's true. So tell me about uh, tell me about the new album. We we've got a new a few new things. We got a new drummer who we've, who's been with us for two years, over two years now. His name's Hunter Deacon. He joined the band, and we got a bunch of touring under our belt before we went in to start recording the album. We recorded the album basically kind of over a period of six months, and it was Hunter's first 
recording with us and his energy and his just his sheer um technical ability really kind of took things in a new direction and amped everything up quite a bit i would say yeah yeah there's some really cool stuff i was listening to uh what's the name of the first single off of it animate object yeah 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 there's a there's a really cool like groove thing going on where like he's playing some like certain time signature and you guys come in and it overlaps in a really groovy way i didn't figure it out i should have but it was really cool A guy who you know we get together to work work out these songs and you know i just start brainstorming i'm like well what if you did this what if you did this what if you did this and every one he's like okay and he just sometimes it takes him like four seconds of quiet computation and then he can do he can do literally anything you ask him to try A lot of people are probably confused when they see you like on a bluegrass bill or when they see you guys start playing because i mean if you if you just don't know john stickley trio yet you're a fiddle player a guitar player and a drummer <laughs> you're you're two-fifths of a bluegrass band with a drummer and then you're not really playing bluegrass tunes right and, and you know we didn't do it consciously it was just it just kind of formed in that way it it wasn't a serious project when it started it was just a side gig for me around Asheville um, when I was playing in Town Mountain actually full-time uh, on bass and wait 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 when you're when you're playing in Town Mountain on bass this is the time period where you would you would rip the bass solo right yes yeah they uh so so the second year I played electric bass yeah they would let me flat pick a solo on Streetcar by John Hartford that was my in my shining moment and <laughs> eventually that turned into me flat picking the solo on bass and everyone slowly leaving the stage and just giving me as long as I wanted especially at my last show at Rinky Nink's Roadhouse in West Virginia they let me have that stage and I took that stage as long as I wanted <laughs> Anyway, though, the, the current group, you, you kind of do, man, I don't really want to compare it to anything specific because it's so, it really is unique. And I know everyone always says that, but there's kind of a, a jam aesthetic. There's like a dance aesthetic. There's this bluegrass influence. You got drums going on. Sometimes you feel like some kind of like jazz, some swing, some like rock creep in. There's other things that are in there. If anything, it's probably most similar to like if some of those Tony Rice unit albums, if like Mar West had drums on it. I think that- Is that a compliment? I don't uh, know. Yeah, yeah. Um, that I, I take that as a huge compliment for sure. That might sound, that might be a little much, honestly. That might be a little in the fusions. You know, Mar West was- That's true, that's true. That could easily get to be like, uh, you know, that could, that could easily go into like Matheny land or like a slightly too complicated for my taste. You guys are groovier than that. I mean, just in general, you guys like. I think that was a that was a conscious choice on our part is to not not be the fusion band that we could so naturally be if we weren't careful. It's you know it's uh, it's interesting though. I'm glad you said that because accessibility is is really important for a band that has like virtuoso kind of jam soloing when that is what everything's built out of, um, it's really easy for it to just be unlistenable. <laughs> just uh, immediately, your ears get tired. Yeah, I have that same same problem, and I, I don't listen to a lot of music like that. You know, uh, I get turned off really easy by very complicated sounding music. I was thinking about uh, all the, kind of like you were talking about, all the phrases that I, I recognize. I've heard something like it before and how you use them in really creative ways. You know, I'm going to ask you to teach me a lick, obviously, because it's what we do here. But I want to point out a couple of things that I heard you do. You know, I heard, I heard like the, uh, you know, that little like repeater lick? Uh-huh. I might have done the... 
Yeah, that's it's the same notes you're doing. Just... Yeah, it's the same idea. Oh yeah, I think I did that in uh, E major. Yeah. What's that from? Uh, it's a Tony Rice lick. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I knew it was coming, but I asked you anyway. Yeah, yeah. No, it's <laughs> definitely a Tony Rice lick, but yeah, uh, I just went went a little longer on it, like. Uh... Something like that. Yeah, it's a great phrase. I like when you get that really crisp, like, pull off, too. When you, like, get that extra note in that. Yeah. Yeah, it's so sick, man. I mean. I heard you do. I heard you do kind of a, a crazy uh, chromatic line too, and I, I don't think this is how you did it. But in my mind, it felt like this. Yeah. You kind of like set <laughs> yeah. up a thing and you slid it up and down. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's also something I've heard. Tony. That's a Tony lick too. I mean, in my head, uh, I think he does something very similar to that on the the one of my favorite Tony solos of all time would be um, Dog's Bull off of Hot Dog. Yeah, yeah, he's like doing something like. Uh. Whatever it is, yeah. I was I was in um, so like D minor soloing position, just. I like went up. Here, I think. <laughs> song i was using the my other guitar the, the griggs that i have that lick just always came out of that guitar for some reason i think it was maybe a wide spacing or something but like every time i would play that solo on that song it made me want to do that lick right i love that phrase though <laughs> there's one technique that i've been doing a lot recently in the trio which is kind of a uh, it, to me, it reminds me of licks that Grisman did on mandolin where two notes per string and then you use the open string in conjunction with two notes. Two, three, four. It sounds like it sounds like ricochet, right? Right, and, and that's what it is. It's it's Grisman mandolin technique that I learned when I was obsessively trying to play mandolin like Grisman. <laughs> Uh, it's it's not as much a line as it is like a pattern based around the that pentatonic scale shape. It's cool. Play play one more time. Play one time through the pattern. This is starting on the A string. Open, open, seven, nine, open D, and then. created a monster <laughs> so that's like that can go anywhere i mean so it's like you're in g bluegrass I 
love that guitar that you play, man. I'd love to check that thing out someday. You should check it out. This is the other one that I play, but it's in D G D G C E. It's in a crazy tuning. And that's the one that's Jack's granddad's D thirty five. This is Grandpa Arthur's. That is awesome, man. <laughs> Beautiful. One of the bourgeois does a really nice cutaway. It's rounded, but it's still a dreadnought mm -hmm. shape. And then I've always loved the Doc Watson model Gallagher uh, point, man, you know, or maybe even a double, double cutaway. Like an SG. <laughs> that would be so metal. You should just get like a flying V, man. Like a very curvy yeah, flying you V. Yeah, acoustic flying V, why not? So since in, in the trio, we simulate bass by using these pog pedals, Lindsay and I do, but it switches the whole guitar over to bass. So you, can, you can't strum at all. You can only do single string bass. But the Celtic dudes, like from the Ducks, they have a, another pickup. It's like a sound hole pickup that has the mag magnets. And they just leave in the magnets for the two low strings, take the rest out, and they they run that through a bass pedal. So all the they can strum the whole chord and just the low note is a bass. So it's it keeps the bass going while you have a strum, which would be such a game changer for me with the band. So that's like the next thing I'm trying to figure out how to do. That's really cool. When you when you tracked the album, did you actually play the bass parts or did you do it the way that you do it live? We tracked the bass parts, but I wasn't monitoring bass. I, I just played what I would typically play with the bass effect on, but I played it just on acoustic guitar. And Lindsay did the thing with violin. And then for those parts, we actually oh, we ran we ran direct through a bass pedal the whole time. So everything was recorded on bass and everything was recorded regular. And then we used the studio to cut the bass parts out and bring those up because one of the things we ran into was, so for this album, way more so than the other ones, we wanted to get the acoustic tone to as dialed as possible and really make it more of an acoustic record. Since we were doing that, we couldn't step on our pedals during you know, the, the take because the mics were so gained up that the pedal clicking was too loud. So we just ran, ran all the effects all the time and went back in post and clipped out the ones that we wanted. Yeah, that's funny. I didn't think about that. And you can't really do the like the the reamping thing. I don't know if you've ever done that with like an electric guitar. We actually we did reamp. We reamped those bass signals and re-recorded that yeah we reamped the bass parts through through a bass amp so it was that bass affected signal run through a bass amp and then mic the amp and that gave us the sound we were looking for which was a natural bass sound which is hard a little hard to get with these effects you know it's it's an effect on a violin trying to sound like a bass and doing it in the box gets a little effecty you know for sure I, I was thinking about you the other day because I was trying to remember, did you, are you the one that did the video where Tony Rice does this lick forever? Yeah, yeah I did that. I was looking for, how do I find that? Because I was looking for that the other night and I couldn't find it. If you, if you, uh, I don't remember what the video is called, but it's on YouTube. I made a one hour long version <laughs> and it's, it's a, uh, it's titled something like purposely very stupid. It's like crazy Tony Rice one hour guitar break okay, or something. Right. And it's just like total bait. Yeah. That cracked me up. I was thinking about it because they just did the G run, uh, the G run challenge where everyone had to do 30 seconds of G run. Uh, yeah, I saw that. And that got everyone, uh, you know, doing that leg forever. Trey Hensley ended his with. If, if someone belatedly tags me in that, I'm just going to post the video of Tony Rice. <laughs> <laughs> Please repost that because I, that got me wanting to look, look for it and find it because that's amazing. That cracked me up the first time I saw that, man. I, I made that and I showed it to, I think I showed it to Jack, Jack Devereaux. And I was like, you know, this is what I do with my time now. Like, you know, hope you enjoy. And uh, I think the first time he looked at it, he thought it was legit. I hadn't made it long enough. <laughs> 
Well, that yeah, your first yeah. one wasn't that long. I mean, I, I, the version I remember was just like perfectly weirdly long. <laughs> you know, like you're kind of like yeah. Then Sam Bush is still there. I realized I realized at that point I should just uh, sort of jump the shark. I should make the one hour version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't, yeah, probably just. Well, that's how it goes, folks. Well, that's James till Stickley comes back. <laughs> And I, I, it was like at 13, and then it was a zero. <laughs> no, it's all right, man. It'll be hilarious in the interview. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to leave a little bit of that in there. This uh, this interview really won places. Uh, I, I got you back basically to say goodbye. I love it. <laughs> so um, we talked about the new album. We talked about uh, the tour you did with Andy. Hopefully there's more things like that going on. I know that was only volume one. But uh, where can the people find you if they want to get more of you and the trio? Well, we're really trying to boost streaming right now. So, you know, one of the best places for us, for you to listen to us, is Spotify. And if you want to follow us on Spotify, that gives you updates on, like, when we're playing near you, location-specific, um, and also let you know about all upcoming singles and new releases, which we hope to keep coming out on a very regular basis so spotify for sure itunes google play um our website's johnstickley.com and you can get physical copies of our music there t-shirts swag stickers and of course we're on you know all the fun social media instagram facebook twitter so yeah tinder follow us follow us wherever you go Yeah, that sounds good, man. Thanks for thanks for coming on. Thanks for talking. Um, hopefully, we do another one of these again soon. Yeah, man, it was my pleasure. Been looking forward to it. So thank you so much for having me. All right, everyone. Uh, thanks for watching. You know what to do. It's YouTube. Like, comment, subscribe. Yeah, we'll see you with another interview soon. Bye. And the